Okay, I'd like to give you an overview of MS and define some type of MS, and also we'll focus on discussing the current management and upcoming trials. So I add a little color and diagram, so easy probably for uh, folks to follow. Like many of you know, MS is autoimmune disease, basically means your immune system act up to uh, target against your own uh, body part. So in diabetes, is prototype of di uh, autoimmune disease, as you know, pancreas is the target organ. So MS, brain and spinal cord, central nervous system is target organ. So the uh, malfunction start in immune system, as you see the brown cells are those your immune cells. So the process start in the peripheral system and the immune cells get overactivated and cross blood brain barrier and then eventually get the central nervous system as you see the blue cells, that's your neurons and the oligodendro cells. I'm gonna show you a movie clip to help you understand the process. And uh, here's a diagram again, shows multiple sclerosis is a multifocal chronic demyelinating disease. The normal uh, neurons wrapped around myelin is showing on top and demyelinated neuron is uh, showing on bottom. You can see how demyelination and chronic inflammation can damage different part of the brain. And as showing on MRI, you see white spots. So it depends on where the lesion occurred, one can um, present experiencing different symptoms. So I'd like to show you the movie clip, even though I got mixed reviews last year, but I thought this is a chance for you to dose off or you wanted to see the rated R. But these big cells you see are central nervous system cells, oligodendrocytes and neurons, and the purple cells are peripheral immune cells. So as long as I figure out how to run the movie. So it's probably not running here. Okay, so. Okay, let's uh, skip the movie, sorry about that. <laughs> I think this has to be loaded in the computer to be able to play. But basically demonstrate the process start in peripheral, so your immune cells get overreactivated and cross blood brain barrier and target the CNS tissues, neurons and oligodendrocytes. So the um, uh, current paradigm of MS, uh, it's summarized here. It's what's going to show you in the movie. The cause is unknown, but we know it's immune-mediated inflammatory process, and it may develop in folks that are inherently more prone to develop MS, even though we don't know the exact genetic factor or trigger at this point. But the phenomenon that we see, we know leukocyte or inflammatory immune cells are involved in the process and it cross blood brain barrier and get into CNS. There's a secretion of inflammatory cytokines and different players such as T cell, B cells, Dr. Guili mentioned, and the macrophages, they're all inflammatory cells. The, these cells add together to damage your myelin and um, oligodendrocytes and neurons in CNS. So it's important to talk about this because when we talk about the drug mechanism action, we sort of had to understand the basis of uh, what caused MS. So in terms of a different type of MS, many of you are familiar with the terms, but I just wanna point out MS is a heterogeneous disease uh, different folks can present with different course of the disease. Even, even you were labeled with the same type of MS, relapsing remitting, you can still present with different uh, rate of relapse or progression. So um, uh, based on natural history studies, 85% of patients present with relapsing remitting MS patient. Over 10 years down the road, uh, maybe 50% become second or progressive. But if you look at long-term studies, over 25 window, time window, maybe 95% uh, will become second or progressive. So s progression seems to be inevitable, but the question is how do we manage progression? Um, the current management scheme is uh, not ideal. We know it's very therapeutically challenging 
And starting disease modifying early is the key. As Dr. Brady mentioned, we have many, many disease modifying treatment. By starting treating early, we may be able to delay the progression of disability. But however, the uh, progression eventually occur once there is a lack of inflammation on MRI, the disease modifying treatment may uh, lose its efficacy. So we may have to stop disease modifying treatment. But sometimes we continue on to step up to treat folks with more aggressive immunotherapy when there's still inflammatory activities on MRI. So you may have heard about tisabri and mitoxantron and cytoxin. And mitoxantron is actually the only FDA-approved treatment for secondary progressive MS. But it comes with uh, uh, significant side effects, as you may have heard about. It has a limited timeline dose that you can only use two to three years. So cardiomyopathy and leukemia are the major concerns. And cytoxin and tisabrio has its own potential problems, and it only has its moderate efficacy in progression. So there's also minimal benefits for other immunosuppressants. You may have heard about methotrexate, or you may be on one of those, methotrexate, cell-step, and immurin. So there's really a critical need for developing more effective treatment in secondary progressive MS. So currently, we largely focus on symptomatic management. We uh, often give a uh, patient Ampiro, which is a drug FDA approved for treating um, walking disabilities, and it may be helpful to speed up walking speed and, and endurance. And we also use uh, uh, modafinil for fatigue and bacofen for you know, spasticity, so on. And Dr. Chad, of course, is going to talk about OTP gene and rehabilitation, which will be beneficial to any stage of MS, not particularly in progressive MS. So let me go back to see if I missed one slide. So here, here's what I just talked about. I want to summarize in a simple form. So based on natural history studies, uh, there will be variable rate of a progression down the road. By starting disease-modifying therapy, DMT, early at the diagnosis of MS, sometimes there may be a delay at the third relapse. So you see the slope is less steep. So there is a delay of progression. But by, uh, based on recent studies on pivotal trials, and starting disease modifying treatment early at the first onset of MS, called clinically isolated syndrome, CIS, will delay the progression further. And however, the, you know, nothing will stop the progression unless we uh, have a therapy that um, hypothetically represents a D. So we're hoping to have a therapy not only uh, delay the progression, but reduce the accumulation of disability, hopefully reverse the course of disease. So to have a therapy that works for progression, um, we need to understand there are two disease aspects in MS. One is called inflammatory phase, the other is a neurodegenerative phase. The two go side by side, even though relapsing remitting has predominantly um, inflammatory driven myelin loss, there's still underlying um, a neurodegenerative component. So uh, by uh, treating folks with MS earlier, one can pr um, prevent neurodegeneration. But what is in need now is a particular therapy that target neuronal fiber loss and scarring to target specifically neurodegenerative phase. And fingolimod, FTY720, Jelenia, it's a drug that was proved as a first oral therapy for treating relapsing MS in 2010. This is the first oral treatment that was approved for relapsing MS. But it represented a new class of molecule that acted on S1P receptor. S1P stands for sphingosine 1-phosphate uh, receptor. It is a lipid uh, receptor uh, molecule, so it, it's widely located in um, many body tissues and cell types. This diagram shows you uh, S1P, it's on T cell surface, so the drug binds to the receptor and internalizes the receptor. By doing so, the T cells would not be able to get out the lymph nodes 
lymph nodes, it's where T cell get activated. So by doing so, T cell actually get trapped in lymph nodes. So you won't have too much of too many of the inflammatory T cells traffic to the brain. So that's what we think the drug works for relapsing MS patient. But what is interesting, it's not only the receptor is present in peripheral lymphocytes. There are um, many receptors that are actually um, widely dis distributed in central nervous tissue cells, including oligodendrocytes, neurons, astrocytes, and microglial. And the drug is uh, lipophilic, means it uh, has uh, ability to cross blood-brain barrier. So it can get to the CNS tissues and binds to different uh, neuronal type. By doing so, it actually promote oligo cell differentiation, migration, and increase neuronal outgrowth. So there may be its potential to uh, act on central nervous system to perhaps repair the damage. And uh, based on the three pivotal trials that leads to the approval of a fingolimod, there is a dramatic, robust effect on brain volume loss. So it's a little busy slide I'll explain to you. There are three pivotal trials, they all have a great name. So transforms and freedoms one and two. So transforms is a study that compared fingolimod high and low dose to Avanax. And you can see the top line, it shows 32% of reduction of brain volume loss with fingolimod as compared to Avanax. It's almost as good as the healthy control. So the other two studies, the Freedom 1 and 2, shows consistent 33% to 35% reduction as fingolimod compared to placebo in terms of reserve brain volume. So based on the fingolimod's central nervous system, peripheral nervous system effect and the brain volume um, effect and clinical efficacy, so this all provide rationale for further clinical trials in progressive MS patient. So uh, simponimod is a drug, it's a second generation of fingolimod. It has the same mechanism action, but it has less side effects. So this will be used for uh, explore, exploratory study in phase three, the uh, latest phase study before its FDA approval, like Dr. Brady mentioned. So expand study, stands for exploring the efficacy and safety of simponimod in patients with secondary progressive MS. We will be one of the uh, sites to uh, study studies soon. So I, I put the uh, clinical trial uh, study in the map. You can see our uh, unit in Michigan is actually in between Canada and US. So we're gonna be one of the 250 sites worldwide to be in, uh, involved in the study. There will be 1,530 patients enrolled in this study. It's very exciting. So the study designs is showing this uh, diagram. It's a double-blind, placebo-controlled parallel group study. And uh, the rate of uh, the active drug versus placebo is two to one. And uh, I just checked the protocol. You don't really have to come up your disease modifying therapy, except if you were on fingolimod, you have to be off. So it's uh, a uh, over two, uh, two year study and maybe even further down extension. So uh, it's uh, well designed because it's double blind and you see us more often and we'll do periodic neuro exam and MRIs. But to be able to be involved in the study, oh, we have to talk about inclusion, exclusion criteria, I'll just mention briefly, pretty soon. But the primary objective of the study is to demonstrate BAF efficacy as compared to placebo in delaying three months confirmed disability progression. It's a pretty busy slide. Basically, it means we examine you measuring neurological status by the score called EDSS. So that's the primary outcome measurement. But there are a couple of secondary objectives. One is to measure your walk speed. So the drug, presumably, if it works, it will help uh, your functional stability as well. It's, it will delay the increase of your walk speed. And the other secondary objective is to 
compared to placebo, it should reduce the MRI lesions and to reduce brain atrophy. Okay, so all of those will be studied. And as I mentioned before, that you would have to have secondary progressive MS to be enrolled in the study. What did I do? Okay, so the age is 18 to 60. So, uh, and there are a lot of uh, exclusion criteria, so we can go through one by one. The major ones are uh, <coughs> uh, women at childbearing age, so uh, because we don't know how the drug gonna affect um, fetuses, so that we need to have a reliable contraception. That's like other trials, it's the same. And then the potential side effects for the drug could cause macular edema, so we do do screens, ophthalmology exam at the baseline. And if there's other unstable medical condition, of course, it will be excluded, and so on and so forth. But if you're interested in the study, we can go through the details, and please uh, contact Judy, our research coordinator, or me, or any other neurologist you see in our clinic. So just to summarize my talk, um, as I uh, try to show you the movie clip, sorry, I couldn't. But progressive MS is very complex. There are many, many new features and pathways that are that yet to be discovered. And we are uh, interested and committed and dedicated to discover potential treatment in progressive MS. So current treatment is to prevent progression by treating patient early with the disease modifying treatment. But the future treatment, especially we're trying to explore now, it's by involved in expand clinical trials, is to, um, explore the efficacy and safety of symponamol in progression. So at least that will allow us to understand the disease better by uh, participating in this study. So thank you for your attention.